house of Jacob, the house of Jacob, the fire, the fire of the house of Esau, show me its stuff, show me its stuff. that we don't understand is that we've been taught to be aggressive, to be uh, dominant, and it doesn't work like that. Use your time to serve others as Christ did instead of serving yourself. That's what we have to do when we become not even just free men. I mean, right now, if you're Say if you're working as far as school or work, then you are serving others. But there will be a time that you will become a free man. Don't hope to give up your service to others. Do it to please God. Do it to please God. Not man. It doesn't matter what happens. If your spirit feels good, you know that you're pleasing God. You do that. You serve Him. You love Him. Because he loves you. He died for you. I'll die for you. If you'll die for me, I know you'll die for me. We believe in Jesus Christ. We family. We serve the Lord. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Recha, Hakwadash. And double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Shalom. Also, shalom to the elect, laboring in sincerity. Okay, I want to go in this video here. I was looking at the video posted. Uh, what is this video? By the apostles speak at the historic 1 West 125th Street, July 4th, 2020. Okay, so. I went to look at the comments, and there's some Jake on here by the name of Unleavened Bread. Uh, this is why it's important that, you know, brothers really keep an eye out for who comes up to your camp, their demeanor, their spirit. You know, I know the scripture says don't look on the outward appearance, but at the end of it, you know, you got some men who should be known by their looks, you know, the you know, effeminates. This man is one foot in the truth and one fit foot in Christianity. And this is why when they leave Christianity, they come into the truth. Then they leave and they bug out. He probably had to be in the truth because uh, he says Yahweh But I went to his page and he's got some effeminate Christian doctrine saying uh, how to love Jesus Christ. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to get to the comments. I'll try to make this quick hit points. Uh, Unleavened Bread. He says, prophesying is not the same as being a prophet. I have no idea what the hell that is talking about. That in itself is a wrong statement. The word prophesying come out, prophet come out of the word prophesy. The hell is he talking about? Pro when you prophesying, you are a prophet. Anyway, the last prophet was John the Baptist. After him, all we can do is teach and preach, okay, which is calling out, like calling out in the church, okay. Let not, let's not take away John's credit or Yahweh's credit. Uh, first of all, we're walking in the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. How the hell are you going to take the credit? How the heck can you take credit from them? Okay, that's crazy, man. These guys are bugged out, okay. For making this statement, Luke 16 and 16. Let's go to Luke 16 and 16. The law of the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached. And every man preacheth into it. And he talks about, it says, until John. See, Matthew 13 and 11, a few scriptures came on the top of my head. It is given to the uh, elect to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to the rest is not given. So he says, Spake is the key word, which is past tense, meaning not to today's time. Clearly, this guy isn't a, isn't a prophet. 
Brother Faith, Faith Restored said, you don't understand reincarnation. The prophets are old, are here today. You know, I mean, this guy's not even, a, like one of the brothers posted, he's not even in the arena for it. What this brother, Yahweh, Yahweh Shah Abad Gah, said, you're not even in the arena for to be a debate. So let's go to, let's go to Ecclesiastes 1 and 9. The thing that have been is that which shall be, and that which shall be is that what shall be done and there is no new thing under the sun okay and um i'm gonna go on with that scripture it says is there anything where it may be said see this is new it had been already of old time which was before us okay and then when you go let's go further down let's go to 13 okay 11 there is no remembrance of former things, neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come, which those that shall come after, okay? So the prophets are back. This is reincarnation. And I, that would, I'm not going to do another whole lesson on reincarnation, but this is to prove that when you read Jeremiah 28 and 8, it says uh, prophets, the prophets prophesy against great countries, kingdoms, Many kingdoms, war, disease, and pestilence. Malachi 3 and 6 says the Lord doesn't change. So do we have pestilence, war, disease, all kinds of madness going on? The Most High have always used prophets. When did that change? See, this is that same old Christian, old, the Christian doctrine, the God of the Old Testament, you know, the Old Testament, or even in the New Testament, he decided to stop the prophets. But we're just supposed to preach and teach. Well, what the hell do you think a prophet is? You know? Let's go to Matthew. Let's go to Matthew 19, 28. And Yahweh Shah said unto them, Verily I say unto you that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye shall, ye shall also, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel, the regeneration. This is all Israelites, man. What, does, what is this guy talking about? Okay. Amos 3 and 7. Surely the Lord God uh, will do nothing but revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. Okay, so how did you find out you was an Israelite? You're saying, Yahawashah. That is a secret. How do you know who Esau is? And to us who's on higher levels, how do we know what the mark of the beast is? The microchip. How did you know that? From men, from prophets. Because if prophets wasn't needed, the Most High would beam down himself and give it to you. That's how you would know. You will wake up in the middle of the night because the Most High do give you things, but you will wake up and say, uh oh, I know the name of the Lord. I know all the mysteries of the Bible. I don't need nobody to tell me that because John the Baptist was the last one. All that that was done then, that's why Paul said everything was written in full time for our learning. All that plays a, a factor now. All these prophets are back doing the same thing. Okay? Um, when you go into the reincarnation of Yahawashah, the one you call Yahawashah, he quoted Yahawashah, would have been Solomon. Okay? And that's scripture. When he asked the Pharisee, who who you think uh, son is the Christ, which is Yahawashah, whose son is he? So at the end of it all, this is why these guys change doctrines because they need doctrines to fit their narrative. So this is why they'll say, uh-oh, reincarnation. See, now this guy can ne never speak on reincarnation because now he would have to admit that the prophets are here today. Let's go to the dagger. Let's go, let's go uh, to the dagger. Let's go to Revelation, the uh, seventh chapter. Let's start at about the uh, fifth verse, fourth verse. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. Who is them that is sealed? And how did they get sealed? Did they get sealed just by going out? He says to, to uh, cry and preach. Well, what do you think that is? How do how did the elect how does the elect get sealed if it's not for prophets? How's that? 
And there were sealed a hundred and forty and four thousands of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed twelve thousand, and the tribe of Reuben were sealed twelve thousand, the tribe of Gad were sealed twelve thousand. This goes on down, okay? So there's twelve thousand out of each tribe, okay? Which gives you 144,000. How did these 144,000 get sealed? If it didn't start from Abba Bivens going back to One West, how did the 144,000 get sealed, man? Going all the way down to the Apostles of Great Millstone, uh, teaching the truth. And even us brothers, there's some elders and brothers that's pushing this word out here on the highways and hedges. You're taking the credit. This guy, this is feminine, is taking the credit. Not not trying try not to take the credit from he says Yahweh Shah, but that's what he's doing. He's trying to take the credit from the men of the Lord that's pushing pushing the work. How is it that these men are sealed if they're not prophets? Which is to say before. Okay, let's go to this word prophet. Okay? I believe this is prophet. Let's go to this word here. This is 1 Corinthians 14, 37. If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. He's taking the word prophet way too uh, out of context, number one. You know, it's just simple. Really. There's true prophets and false, there's false prophets. Okay. Let's look at this word prophet, G4396. Let's see what it says. In the Greek writings, interpreter of oracles or other hidden things. One who moved by the spirit of Yahweh and henceforth his organ or spokesman solemnly declares to men that he has received by inspiration, especially concerning future events and in particular such as relate to the cause of the kingdom of Yahweh and to, and to human salvation. Okay. So how do we, a prophet is supposed to be to determine, look at the scriptures and put it together and show future events. In fact, the scripture says your sons and your daughters shall basically prophesy. Okay. Which mean, and they'll see things. They'll see dreams, not the prophets of the Lord on the hedges. So the, Prophet, prophecy hasn't gone anywhere, man. You know, goes on to say the Old Testament prophets has for, foretold the kingdom, deed and deeds and death of Jesus and the Messiah, of John the Baptist, the herald of Jesus and and the Messiah, of the illustrious prophet the Jews expected before the event of the Messiah. Okay, so th there was prophets prophesying the the, uh, the time of the Messiah coming. There's prophets today that's going to prophesy the time of the Messiah coming. Of men filled with the spirit of Yahweh, by Yahweh's authority and commands and the words await, pleads the cause of Yahweh and urges salvation of men. So in order for us to be saved, in order for us to be delivered, the scripture says, he who shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered, proving you must know the name of the Lord. How are you going to call on the name of the Lord if you don't know it? And this guy knows the name of the Lord. So how you how did you call on the name of the Lord? How are you going to call? There was prophets that had to prophesy you, to you that name. Okay? That name. You, none of us knew. In the religious assemblies of the Christians, they are moved by the Holy Spirit to speak. Having power to instruct, to comfort, to encourage, rebuke, convict stimulate their hearers okay so basically the prophesy to see uh before the events showing you that we can go into scriptures and show you uh the mark of the beast you know the nuclear destruction the famines the war the pestilence and everything else that's coming man so yes prophets are here today it's real simple you know this jake like this just not meant to get it I'm sure there's many other scriptures on that, but you know, that's all I have on that, Shalom.